Welcome everybody, we are ATAEC, Global Associative Network of Artists and Community Climate Actions. I am Violeta Kokopegi, and with us today, Makoshi Malangu. Makoshi is the future of traditional African foods, a foodie, a chef, a farmer, an academic and a panzula for life. He has a strong background in food processing, novel food designs, modern culinary trends, sustainable food trends, and science acumen in traditional African foods. He comes from a village called Sivalo in Nkai district, Zimbabwe, one of the world's most food and secure regions. He obtained a bachelor in food science and technology at the University of Zimbabwe. After completing his first degree, he worked in numerous restaurants in South Africa as a waiter, which helped build his insatiable hunger for food development. He next completed a bachelor with honors in animal science and ranch land management with the Lupin State University, Zimbabwe, and a master in animal science at the University of Four Hair, South Africa. He then went to Italy to study a master's in food and beverage innovation and management at the Università Politecnica delle Marche in Ancona, three hours drive from Parma. Parma has always been a food city, a capital of food, located in the heart of the food valley in the Emilia-Romagna region the European region with the highest number of products with the labels Protected Designation of Origin, PDO, and Protected Geographical Indication, PGI. Makoshi has intrinsic knowledge of Italian food systems. He has worked in numerous countries, from Botswana to South Africa, from Zimbabwe to Zambia, and from Spain to Italy. He is involved in multiple projects, such as the Amagugu Food Expo in Zimbabwe and the Traditional African Food and Agriculture Expo in Kinshasa, DRC. He is currently lecturing in food science at the Lupin State University in Zimbabwe, with a strong focus on traditional African foods. He is the founder of the African Food Revolution, an organization concerned with food production on the African continent. He is also the author of the award-winning book on traditional African foods entitled Our Food, Our Heritage, Our Future. Um, good evening to, good afternoon, good evening, good day to everyone. Um, my name is Makwasi. I'll be discussing about uh, African food systems. So African food systems, uh, what are they? So we're looking at basically the African food systems that occurred uh, before colonization. So um you remember that uh for instance uh the better half of africa was colonized by the british empire and the french empire so there's a lot that uh, we lost uh specifically in in terms of our connection to the environment so um we became um people followed uh, a new food trend which was uh, heavily uh, drawn from uh, a French and an English culture. For instance, I'm from Zimbabwe and uh, in Zimbabwe uh, we talk about the British uh, food system, the British culinary system. So with the British culinary system, uh, we are looking at um, uh, things like uh, the Cornish paste, things that we see. And when we talk about African food systems, we're talking about uh, a whole lot of food, a whole lot of diversity. 
first of all we talk about the, the grains uh, which is the salt um, the pearl millet and the finger millet and then we also talk about uh, venison which is game meat which uh, at the moment were prohibited from from consuming because um, the locals have been termed as the poachers of their own animals and um, also uh, when we look at food systems or looking at just the natural um, vegetables that we had so you realize that um, Prior to colonization, we had this huge array of, of vegetables, whether they were dried, they were fermented, and they were fresh. So that increased our dietary um, uh, dietary diversity score. So you find that uh, those were the African food systems that were there. Uh, a lot of fermentation milk products a lot of fermentation with the mil uh, meat products so um, these are the food systems that we talk about so we were mostly heavily inclined towards uh, nature which was uh, important for our spirituality and basically our culture uh, you realize that uh, when we talk about spirituality, we had uh, uh, numerous um, festivals that we had. We also had a season for the first fruits. So those were uh, African food systems. We also had uh, in 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 some instances where we would go and ask for 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 rain, which were the rain dancing ceremonies. So all of that, um, all of uh, that um, which is in the past uh, was lost and these are the, the the food systems we talk about we we are talking about a, a huge diversity a huge connection between humanity and 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 the environment and uh, with the the growth of uh, urbanization we've realized that uh, as Africans we've uh, managed to take ourselves away from nature so we've uh, moved ourselves from the normal african food systems into this new food systems which we are unable to adapt to because uh we've got a lot of um, problems in terms of uh, the health aspect uh i think you know being healthy uh, also has a certain element of uh, a connection um, with uh, nature so once you disconnect someone from nature I think there are a lot of problems that are arise and uh, that's one of the reasons why we 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 as African food revolution have um, looked into this topic of uh, the African food systems so you'll um, also realize that in communities uh there are so many things that are involved uh that build a community um for for instance in 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 the african food revolution we uh, believe that uh there are five pillars which build a normal um society uh which is uh food uh, which are the the arts um, we talk about fashion we talk about um, we talk about architecture and we talked about spirituality so in all uh, the great uh, kingdoms and in terms of development you find that these five pillars are there so we've managed to disassociate ourselves from the five pillars and it's seriously affecting the way we are developing as as Africans including the development of our own food systems so you find that we are heavily um, dependent on, 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 on foreign food systems according to the Organization for World Peace 2019 Zimbabwe is among the four highest food insecure countries how do you communities in Zimbabwe face that on your day by day? So, um, 
talking about uh, food insecurity, we know probably uh, Zimbabwe is one of the most food insecure areas and uh, probably I'll speak about my my village where we really face a lot of difficulties specifically with the water specifically with the grain reserves um, with the livestock so I'll just mention that uh, in in Zimbabwe basically we have two food systems which are completely different we have uh, one which is the urban setup and two which is the rural setup so both of those have got uh, two um, different characteristics although uh, with the rural one it's uh, also slowly evolving into the urban one um, you find that uh, with the urban one it's 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 mainly based it's uh, got nothing to do with nature um, their biggest uh, supplier of food is uh, the supermarkets. So when there's a, a really um, a slowdown in in the economy, what happens is that uh, this has a direct effect on food security in um, the households in, in, in urban areas. So I think in one of the researches that we, we carried out, we realized that uh, what happens is that people tend to eat less and probably ha start having supper and tend to sk uh, skip uh, critical meals like, like breakfast. So it's, it's, it's more dependent on the supermarket. That's the first one. And then the second one is a rural one, which is uh, more dependent on... on um, nature so you find that uh, uh, what happens is that during the rainy season we have an abundance so if the people are unable to to process that food uh, remember we, sometimes we have a rainy season for up to three months and uh, it's really difficult for them to prepare um, uh, for instance vegetables leafy vegetables and and that creates a lot of problems uh, we have a lot of post harvest losses so what happens there's an abundance uh, during the rainy seasons people eat a lot the, the the livestock also benefits and it's it's just a, a season of, 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 of happiness and then comes a season where we generally are involved in in, in processing in the village and uh, after that, uh, there is a, a season where it's it's the it's the season of um, hunger. I'll, I'll put it at as a season of hunger where it's probably um, the the hottest season. Uh, very little water, very little uh, resources we're getting from from the um, from nature. So that creates a lot of um, uh, food insecure households. So you realize that uh, um, what needs to be done is, uh, I think, a strategy in which uh, there is um, an intended effort to uh, process food and, and, and reduce uh, the post harvest losses in, in, in villages. So it's 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 a dynamic situation where um, if if you realize what we're trying to do is we're trying to to get to one year of uh, food until we get to the next rainy season. So in the past we could do that because we had uh, this huge diversity, including the the wild mushrooms. So what has happened is that we've lost our contact with nature. We've lost. Um, how we know um, about the trees, how we 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 um, prepare for the rainy season, and uh, this has had a, a really difficult blow on on the current food systems. So you find that uh, what is happening also is that we we've also had problems with um, the 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 dietary based diseases uh, like obesity. I think. Uh, 
we, we were starting to have uh, high incidences of uh, obesity and uh, coronary heart diseases because there's now a, a significant increase in, in deep fried food. So that's uh, where we are with both uh, food systems. Uh, so it, it really creates this food insecure where one area heavily depends on the supermarket and the other one uh, really depends on nature. So there is a lot of work that needs to be done to balance uh, those two. Could you draw for us what is the reality of Zimbabwe, politically, socially, and environmentally? Um, well, there's a, a lot that's uh, happening um, within the country. And I think one of the most important things is the financial instability that's that's there so it's 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 having a, a direct impact on uh, a lot of uh, production systems in in, in 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 the economy which are directly related to food food aspects so uh, there's a lot of um, uh, things that are really stopping the progress of uh, development so one aspect uh, we could delve into or we we could look at is uh, socially how we we we, we stay as Zimbabweans so you you find out that uh, one thing uh, is that as I mentioned before there is the urban and the rural so in in actual fact it's it's been uh, the, the people with the most resources have been the, the rural people. And uh, I think it's only recently that uh, also in terms of food production, we've had an increase from people in, 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 in the villages and in the rural setups. So yeah, that's, that's a, a positive because uh, in the past, even from just the way uh, I think our mental well-being, we've always uh, looked down upon the people from the villages as being impoverished and, and, and being backward thinking. And I think this might have been due to um, a lot from colonization and uh, our, move, our movement uh, towards uh, urbanization. So you realize that it, it, it's slowly getting into the villages where people are starting to be confident people starting to know that they are the custodians of their culture they um, they now know that they can be able to produce uh, food that people can consume so there's a lot that's happening I think in, in terms of socially and uh, also there are a lot of uh, programs that are are there at the moment uh, where we 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 are looking at uh, conservation initiatives within the village and you you find that most of the traditional um uh, uh, traditional is, is uh, especially the traditional festivals especially the, the rain dancing it's got a lot of conservation techniques and there's also a movement from the government where they are looking at traditional foods and uh, we're going back to the indigenous foods which is a plus because it 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 works in terms of uh, conservation so that's i think from the political front that um in the politics they are taking everything the food systems back to the basics i think they're resetting the the the, the the factory settings uh, which we had almost lost and um, uh, when we also look at the environment i know we've we've lost a lot in terms of uh, flora and 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 fauna so there there is a, an, an initiative from the government where uh, actually, what's happening in the schools? Uh, remember, at first we 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 didn't learn much about our environment and about the indigenous names. So that's been that's being implemented in the in in lower level schools, which is the primary school, 
and and they're also a, a beginning of high school where people are supposed to know about their nature. I think this is a really good initiative in terms of uh, conserving our nature because uh, I I don't see a reason why everyone should be an ambassador of 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 foreign trees because uh, what we learned previously were industries that were brought by uh, colonization for instance if you look at um, the um, eucalyptus tree if you look at the eucalyptus tree it's 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 a tree that's not fit for the african savanna because it it consumes a lot of water but uh, we've been taught that it's 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 positive from the literature that we've read so i think the initiative of really going back and really documenting our our own um ecosystems is, is imperative towards uh to us going uh further in in in, in development and um also this thing is coming from a, a lot of stakeholders uh now uh engaging and uh, collaborating to help solve uh, such problems so also when we 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 also look at uh, i think the food aspect i think there are micro regions where we are producing certain foods which are beneficial for improving on 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 the food security that we 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 want to have at a certain level at a certain time how does the access of community owned farmland contextualizes Could you say that Zimbabwe is walking towards an inclusive family farming, sustainable, and that activates the economy of rural territories? So um, when I talk about uh, community-owned farmland, um, probably in Zimbabwe it's a, a good model where um, most of the land is under tribal lands which is the majority of land so the custodian of the land is is uh, the chief and everyone from the descendants who of that certain village are, are given access to to a piece of land so um everyone can be involved in 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 farming activities and uh at uh, the what usually happened uh, earlier is that uh, there was a movement towards uh, individual commercial farming which i thought was 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 really good but not in terms of the african context because uh, in africa we are a people that works together that uh, i think even when you look at our eating habits we 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 tend to use a lot of uh, commensality which is eating together so previously what used to happen is that also with our grandfathers they used to work as a team and uh, the more the merrier so it was like uh, the more the, the more people in the family the larger the yields that were were there so when we we look at uh, the community based um we we have a lot of uh, community owned projects we also have uh, some which are family owned uh i think we we started having that development over the last few years so you realize that in most of the villages uh we have this small community based initiatives where people are working as a community people are driving their own development um i've been to several uh villages where people are producing a lot of 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 food uh just because of these community based initiatives so 
when we look at uh, the community, I think there's a lot of dynamics that's still um, there. Uh, things like the, 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 the political diversity, ethnic diversity, and religious diversity. So all those things uh, affect uh, some of these community-based initiatives. And uh, the last uh, initiatives I've, I've been looking at were family-based initiatives. These are more robust and more rigid and... Uh, Actually, they can stand the test of times, and I, 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 I believe in in the developed countries, uh, most of the businesses that are being run uh, from family-run businesses. So I think one aspect that uh, we need to do is to build um, stronger family ties and uh, also initiate uh, agro-based uh, family businesses. So that will help uh, Africa uh, regain its previously lost uh, food uh, secure status. So I think earlier, um, for instance, when I grew up um, in my grandmother's place, we were hardly food insecure. So it uh, it was a place where we had uh, food for three to f three th up to three years. Um, she knew how to to preserve because uh, we had dried vegetables, we had the, the dried meats, we had cereals that we could um, take underground, which we could use probably after two years when we we have. A succession of of paid harvest, so there was a lot of technology that was there which wasn't documented. So it 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 also was part of the process of the African Food Revolution to document uh, what we had almost lost in 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 terms of our our food um, heritage. So there's a lot that we've been doing and a lot that we've been pushing to to really. Uh, be in the front and uh, the pioneers of 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 of, of uh, conserving this rich African food uh, uh, system. What are some of the most uh, recent projects you are working on? So, as the African Food Revolution and uh, some of the initiatives that uh, I'm involved in, um, you realize that uh, our main goal was to uh, we go back to um, the food secure villages that we used to have so the first thing that we did was uh, we worked on documentation so you realize that um, i wrote a book on traditional african food which is entitled our food our heritage our future so it's a book that's available which has managed to um, document all uh, the food systems that were there including the indigenous african f uh, uh, fruits um, that were there uh, within our villages and that are still there so it's it's one of the projects that we've done We've also had projects in which we've been teaching uh, women on the processing techniques uh, where we're mixing the, the scientific uh, revolution. I think there was a scientific revolution. Uh, when we talk about scientific re re uh, revolution, we talk about mechanization, we're talking about enzymes, we're talking about um, various uh, commodities that you can implement into our food uh, matrices things like gelatin so we we we, we actually made um, efforts into going to the villages training people training people how to process their food how to uh, at least get to one calendar year in in terms of food security 
So there's an interesting project that we are currently working on, and this is a, a duck project. So it's a duck project in which we've um, asked the villagers to keep ducks. So specifically in my village, we've got a problem, as I mentioned before, with uh, water and uh, with food, uh, protein sources and, and everything. So what we've done is that we've... Um, We've designed a pond. This is one of the designs that I made. We designed a pond, uh, which is a, a five by five by um, uh, one meter. So that's about uh, twenty-five cubic meters of water. So it 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 can last um, up to three months. And what we've done, we've got a system where in in places where they probably have to fetch water from a distance. Uh, we've got mechanism where we can even a school child can get the water into into the pond. So what happens is that the pond always has water, and uh, this water is used to replenish the gardens around them. So it's 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 really worked uh, in 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 terms of uh, boosting the food security, and uh, the garden also feeds feeds the ducks. So it's something really interesting that we are into we've also worked on uh, in i think in cameroon we've we've worked on the link between our indigenous food and and and, and weight control and that one is uh, being led by um, one of our members uh millicent forsyth so it's 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 diversity where we are really trying to change the way we we think about uh, our african food systems so they they also initiatives excuse me um where uh we've also had traditional food uh, festivals for for instance we've had uh, amakuku traditional food fair which is in matopos which is like the spiritual area um in zimbabwe it's uh, it's a place full of hills beautiful place um and uh, we've had our traditional food festivals there and it it's a really been uh, nice it's really been uh, educational entertaining and it, it's got us to link more with nature so um, there there are a lot of uh, other um projects we are working on so we 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 will um show them to to to, to the people um and most of them can be found on our website uh, which i think uh violeta will share with with everyone thank you you can access on africanfoodrevolution.com and also contact Makosi and other artists and cultures at ataek.com. Makosi, what drew you to your current field? I believe I've got a, a, a huge passion for, for food development. Um, I'm a food scientist uh, by profession. I, I'm also a cook. I'm also an, a farmer um, and also a writer. And I just love talking about food. So it's I think food is part of my DNA. And I've always loved everything to do with the uh, the connection with nature, um, uh, the fact that uh, you could get basically everything from from nature, which is the, the food aspect, uh, without necessarily going to the supermarket. So it it was really uh, what drew me uh, into my current field of of, of study, which is uh, food, and I've. Uh, managed to move my, myself from the global food that we do have to a section of uh, traditional African food. So um, I've, I've, I've learned chemistry all my life and uh, chemistry 
I think it's it's the building block of of any matter when we talk about matter uh, we, we we talk about chemistry the um, interlinking of of, of of atoms elements uh, compounds uh, it, it creates um, so much and then when you look at things like uh, food uh, chemistry there's a lot that's 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 the um, and these are some of the things that uh, drew me into my love for for the food uh, revolution. So when you when you start understanding, I think when I had a deeper learning of of chemistry, it really taught me a lot about uh, our own indigenous food. So it it actually was a movement and. I really appreciate what I've been learning in the last couple of years, especially when I came back from Italy, on our own food, because the Italians love their food, just almost like the Spanish. It seems we all uh, love our food. Um, what uh, would you say are the biggest challenges you face uh, today on the present with your work? I think one of the biggest challenges that I have is that uh, we, we as Africans, have been taught how to think. So it, it it makes us really it makes the whole situation difficult to to try and tell someone that they can think independently from institutes. So um, in my line of work, there is a lot of uh, risk taking. I work specifically with the uh, villages and uh, there's a uh, stereotypical thinking um, about people from the villages so uh, there's still people who do not accept that uh, people from the village uh, know a lot of information so it's it it it, it really tends to to make things a bit difficult and we are moving back into the villages so that we become the ambassadors from the village and are able to tell the story with confidence and and probably also uh, tell people outside the world that uh, I mean outside uh, Africa that we are the custodians of our own food and we are proud we 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 are putting I think scientific and uh, technological argument into this uh, i would say the new face to traditional african food so most of the times um the challenges that i face are people who tend to say they cannot do it um, they do not have the finances they do not uh, like the idea they think it's backward and uh, to me it is the future this is the future of i think the whole of humanity because uh in in africa we still have a lot of uh food systems that are, are still intact um for instance if i talk about the the veg tables there's a lot that hasn't been really brought to the table so those those are some of the challenges that we face and uh, normally in terms of uh, when we're doing our research it's it's difficult to get uh, funded research on on african food so most of the things that we do we do it at our own cost uh, for the love of of uh, what we we we, we have and uh, just as a conservation a conservation initiative for um, the future generation in front of us so they have to find this rich culture with these uh, rich uh, uh, food materials with this uh, rich food expos uh, we're looking at these dynamic books showing our culture uh, we're looking at uh, also videos we're looking at uh, the costumes i i i really appreciate what southern Afri uh, southern americans do in 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 terms of the costumes and and everything and and it's not that difficult to replicate that in africa so we we've got 
cultures that we're looking at and were impressed and we really like the the movement that we are also now uh putting the five pillars in place Um, so I, I will talk about uh, the five pillars of any functional society, which I believe are, are important in building any society. So um, the first one, and this will be linked to uh, my culture in, in specific, uh, I will I'll break down all the elements. So all these elements inter act or um, interrelate so it's 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 more of like um, a chain an ecosystem um, i might say an, an an ecosystem a dynamic ecosystem uh, which re involves the spiritual realm so um, the first one is is food when we look at food uh, I think when I'll first name the five of them and then we'll see how they all link. So the first one is uh, food, the second one is art, the third one is fashion, the fourth one is architecture, and then the fifth one is spirituality. Right. So in in what I do, I I mainly focus on 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 the food aspect because uh, if if you realize that. Uh, if we talk about food and fashion, uh, there's a link there because uh, if you look from our own culture, uh, what we 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 used to um, put on as our as our sandals and and our blankets were 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 made from from the heights of of of, of cattle. And this was after a ceremony, which was an an artistic ceremony. Probably we'll, we'll talk about uh, one of the most important uh, ceremonies in in, in my um, clan, which is uh, called the Gubuisa, which is uh, bringing back the deceased uh, back into the home. So I think it's it's uh, there are similar rituals that are there in in I've I've seen them in in Italy and China so where people honor the dead uh, and uh, they try and uh, pay their respects by bringing them back home I've I've seen a few documentaries where they take them from from the cemetery, bring them back into the house, probably prepare their favorite meal and just have their chair there. So it, it, it almost is similar, but uh, with what we, is similar to what we do as, as, as Africans in, in my tribe. So that form of spirituality, that form of uh, art, uh, the, the 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 meat that's uh, consumed there because uh, the, the meat that we used to eat was from goat meat and the goat meat didn't uh, have any salt it had it was purified using herbs so there was a lot of emphasis on 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 on, on nature so you can see how um, everything inter uh, inter uh, relates between the spirituality, the food, the art, the fashion. And uh, also when we talk about the architecture, we're talking about uh, when we do go to the the uh, graveyard, when we're taking the, the, uh, the deceased spirit to the homestead, uh, which... Uh, specific area where we're looking at where was the disease carried to 
who used to carry the disease there was a lot of spirituality involved and and the food the art the decorations what they used to wear so uh, as you can see uh, this is one of the events i will I'll just uh, talk about briefly and then also i'll talk about uh, another interesting one which is um, the, the first food uh, so this was also an important uh, event uh, where uh, it, it, it was called Ingwala. Uh, it was the ceremony of the first fruit. And the Paramount King had, uh, he was in charge of this uh, event where people uh, consumed their first fruit. And it was an event where we had traditional beer, we had um, a lot of dancing, we tasted uh, a variety of food, we cleansed ourselves, which is also the medicine aspect. Uh, I firmly believe that medicine and uh, food work hand in hand. And it's, it's for this reason uh, why it was an important event. And this event... Uh, sort of disappeared but these are events that were working tirelessly to bring back so in in all of this you can see that uh, these uh, five pillars are men i could see I, I i could say it's a link between the ancestors and humanity together with nature so nature played an important role in 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 all this aspect i, I believe it was the if it was a canvas painting it, it it will be the canvas and then the paints will be humanity and and the ancestors creating a masterpiece thank you makosi thank you the african food revolution and thank you for listening you can connect with other artists, activists, cultures, and projects at www.ataek.com. This is Cultural Landscapes. <laughs>